cannot believe it. This can't be true. This can't be true. It's a monstrous case. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're looking at infamous and shocking cases of minors who were forcefully taken, only to be discovered years later. This is the place where JC was held prisoner for 18 years and where police say she was forced to raise the two children she had with the kidnapper. Carlina White. This is such an incredible story and the family tells us they never gave up hope that she would come home one day. In 1987, Joy White and Carl Tyson took their baby Carlina White to Harlem Hospital Center in New York City as she had a fever. However, Ann Petway, who was dressed as a nurse, took the infant and disappeared. Oh, she's all right. <laughs> well, we got a home. She's taking good care of my baby. For 23 years, White was raised as Petway's child. But after discovering her birth certificate was faked, White was told by Petway that her mother abandoned her. Not believing her tale, White searched online databases for missing children. She wasn't sure exactly why uh, she belonged to that family. There was things like there wasn't physical similarities and stuff like that. There, she discovered images of herself and got in contact with authorities. In 2011, a DNA test confirmed she was the missing victim and she was reunited with her biological parents. Petway was sentenced to 12 years in jail and was released in 2021. Alex Batty. The twists in Alex Batty's story are coming into focus. After being raised by his grandmother, Susan Caruana, young Alex Batty was taken on a trip with his mother, Melanie Batty, and her father, David, to Marbella, Spain. However, they never returned to the UK. Melanie sent Caruana a video that detailed plans to live an alternative lifestyle. In 2023, Alex was found walking near Toulouse, France. I thought I should stop and ask him if he was okay or even just help him or at least bring him back to a village, back to civilization. He had left his mother and grandfather to return to the UK. For the past six years, the trio lived nomadically across Europe, living in various communes with other families. Alex was homeschooled and was made to work to earn money. Thankfully, he was reunited with his grandmother. This moment was undoubtedly huge for him and his loved ones. However, at the time of writing, Melanie and David have yet to be located. Gregory Jean. And I feel so thankful to God because without God, I don't think I would have been here. In 2010, Gregory Jean Jr. and his brother Samuel visited their father, Gregory Jean Sr. and stepmom, Samantha Davis. Yet while his younger brother was allowed to return to Florida, Gregory was not and was forced to stay in Jonesboro, Georgia. Even though his mom, Lisa Smith, alerted welfare agencies, the police weren't informed of the incident. Gregory spent four years at his father's. During that time, he was kept home from school, beaten and mistreated, while his step-siblings were given preferential treatment. It concerns me as the police chief, more importantly as a father. You know, no one wants their child or any individual to go through the situation that this particular child went through. In 2014, Gregory planned his escape by sending Smith a friend request on Facebook. The police acted and searched the property, finding Gregory in a nook behind a false wall. Gregory Jean Sr. and Davis were charged for their crimes. They denied knowing the child existed. They um, denied knowing the child was in the residence. They had no idea who the child was and why we were there. Sun Wei. In 1995, little Sun Wei was walking home from preschool in Liangsheng Yi, Sichuan Province, China. However, he didn't return home. Instead, Sun was lured by a stranger with candy into a van. He was then sold to a couple in Jieyang, Guangdong Province, where his name and birth date were changed. Three decades of a one-child policy in China and traditional family preference for sons are factors believed to be contributing to many child kidnapping and trafficking cases. Sun's parents, Sung Zhenghua and Peng Lianhui, didn't have a photo of their son, making finding him difficult. Zhenghua traveled across the country, working odd jobs while searching for their child. As a teen, Sun left the unkind couple who favored their biological daughter. He was later persuaded by friends to upload his DNA to a missing persons database, which led to a reunion with his biological parents 20 years after he vanished. Kayla Unbahan. A family is in shock after a mother and daughter went on a camping trip but never returned. In 2017, young Kayla Unbahan visited her mother Heather at her home in Wheaton, Illinois. The next day, her father Ryan went to pick up his daughter, who he had full custody of. Instead, both mother and daughter had vanished. The search to find Kayla was unsuccessful, and there seemed to be little hope. In 2022, Netflix's Unsolved Mysteries featured an episode on a taken child that contained an age progression photo of Kayla. 
in 2023, a store owner in Asheville, North Carolina, who had seen the episode, spotted a teenager who matched the image. The more we tell the story of these missing children and put their images out to the public, the more likely that they're going to be recovered. They called the police, who discovered it was Kayla and reunited her with her father. Heather was arrested and charged for her crime. What's most unusual is the ability to stay off the grid, if you will, for that period of time. Stephen Stainer and Timothy White. In 1972, young Stephen Stainer was seized by Kenneth Parnell in Merced, California. When Stephen didn't make it home from school, his parents immediately were alerted. For years, Stainer was horribly mistreated by Parnell as they moved around California. When he got older, Parnell attempted to use Stainer to take another victim. However, the boy sabotaged each attempt. Using another method in 1980, Parnell took little Timothy White. Desperate to prevent White from suffering as he had, Stainer escaped with White 16 days after he was taken. He literally said, I was not going to let that child go through what I had already been through. Parnell served five years in jail for taking Stainer and White. He was later sentenced for an unrelated case to 25 years to life and died in 2008. Sadly, Stainer passed away in a motorcycle accident in 1989 and White in 2010 from a pulmonary embolism. Stephen was a national hero. Steve Carter. In 1977, Mark Barnes's girlfriend, Charlotte Moriarty, vanished with their son Mark's Panama Barnes in Hawaii. While Barnes reported the incident, he never saw the pair again. Moriarty handed marks to a stranger and gave cops a fake name and birth date for her child. She then checked into a mental health hospital before disappearing. In 2011, after reading about Carlina White's story, Steve Carter in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania researched his own history. After all, when he was four, Carter was adopted from an orphanage in Honolulu. We moved from Hawaii to Tennessee and then New Jersey when I was in the third grade and didn't really think much about my adoption. He visited the website missingkids.com and found an age progression image of Marks that looked like him. The first person that came up, the image looked very much like me. What followed next was a year of piecing together a puzzling timeline of his own past. Carter then had a DNA test that confirmed he was the missing child after 34 years, leading to him reconnecting with his birth family. Carter says he's always known who he is, and thanks to this sketch, now knows more about who he was. Elizabeth Fritzel. How on earth can these things happen? And in this particular case, how could he possibly get away with it for so long? In 1984 in Amstetten, Austria, 18-year-old Elizabeth Fritzel was asked by her father, Josef, to help install a door in the basement. He then locked her up in this newly created prison. For 24 years, Elizabeth was hidden, while Josef told the community she had run off to join a cult. Elizabeth was forced to give birth to her father's children several times. In 2008, the eldest daughter, Kirsten, was taken to the hospital by Josef. His odd behavior and explanation for where her mother was concerned staff, who alerted authorities. When Yosef returned with Elizabeth, the police swooped in and the truth was discovered. I cannot believe it. This can't be true. This can't be true. It's a monstrous case. Yosef pleaded guilty to the charges and was sentenced to life imprisonment. For 24 years, no one suspected the appalling crimes that were going on in there. J.C. Dugard. This is the place where J.C. was held prisoner for 18 years and where police say she was forced to raise the two children she had with the kidnapper. In 2009, Philip Garrido was at the University of California, Berkeley to see the campus along with his two daughters. However, their strange behavior led to Garrido's parole officer calling him to the office. He arrived with the two girls and their mother, J.C. Dugard, who had vanished in 1991. That year, the young Dugard had been seized by Garrido and his wife, Nancy, as she walked to her school bus in Myers, California. While people saw the seizure and there was a thorough search for her, Dugard couldn't be located for 18 years. In 2011, Garrido was sentenced to 431 years to life imprisonment, while Nancy received 36 years to life. Dugard wrote two books on her experience. It was not a day that I didn't cry. I felt like there would never, ever be a day that I wouldn't cry again. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. 
Michelle Knight, Amanda Berry, and Gina DeJesus. It was a night packed with emotion and drama. You see the people cheering right there. It all began to unfold before sundown in Cleveland. In 2002, 21-year-old Michelle Knight vanished. In 2003, teenager Amanda Berry disappeared. In 2004, teenager Gina DeJesus was captured. Each was taken from Cleveland, Ohio by Ariel Castro, who kept them at his house and mistreated them. These young women who vanished as girls were so close by, just blocks away from where they disappeared from in the first place. In 2013, Barry managed to get the attention of neighbors, who broke a hole big enough for her, along with her daughter by Castro, to escape. It was May 6 when Barry yelled for help from behind a locked screen door, bringing the world's attention to the Cleveland home where the trio had been held against their will for more than a decade. This led to authorities coming and saving Knight and DeJesus, too. Castro was arrested shortly after the rescue. He pleaded guilty to a litany of charges. Castro was sentenced to life imprisonment plus 1,000 years without the possibility of parole. However, he died by his own hand a month into the sentence. 